DerpyCon 2022, The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. DerpyCon was a multi-genre convention held from October 28th through 30th, 2022 at the Hyatt Regency, New Brunswick in New Brunswick, New Jersey. This is the second year for DerpyCon at this venue. Let's see how they did. For the good, I appreciate the flexibility of the panel staff this year. I am part of a group that does panels, and unfortunately we had two members with two separate problems. One came down with flu-like symptoms and could not attend the con, another had a family medical emergency. The panel staff was great with working with us and working around said issues. I appreciate the technology staff this year. The panel rooms were mostly bulletproof, working reliably. We almost had one little scare, but it turns out the projector decided to work then. They had staff on the way over to fix it already, and I appreciate the work they put in. DerpyCon is setting the standard for a small convention's video game room. The pictures here do not even depict the size of this room, because it's not even showing all the consoles they had. They had stand-up arcade machines, pinball machines, along with all those consoles. They are doing great work in their video game room, and has become a cornerstone of the convention. DerbyCon did a great job with its autograph setup this year. They took underutilized space in the atrium and utilized it really, really well. It kept the lines and the people who wanted autographs in that area, and it just worked so well. The hotel independent of the convention actually set up gender-neutral bathrooms for attendees who would need them. And I think it's a good idea. It does promote inclusivity, and it seemed to work out really, really well. DerbyCon did have a COVID policy that required masks this year, and I appreciate it. It offers at least some form of protection, and I thought the convention did a reasonably good job at enforcing said policy. The Saturday crowd was amazing. DerpyCon had a huge turnout, obviously the biggest they've ever had, and it was incredible to see the venue held up, the staff did a good job. It was busy, but I would never say it was super crowded or unpassable, and really everyone involved with Saturday on the staff of DerpyCon should be proud. The convention did something that was an amazingly good idea. The masquerade they knew was going to be crowded. So what they did was they projected the masquerade onto blank walls that were in the atrium level. It was a great, great idea. You could actually relatively comfortably sit in the lobby atrium area and watch the masquerade on two different projections. I absolutely loved this idea. During one of our panels, an attendee had an emergency situation occur. The staff did a good job helping the attendee out during this. They also helped us out by moving us to a different panel room, allowing us to continue with our work. But I really do want to focus on the good work the staff did during this emergency. They really helped that attendee out. I want to give special appreciation to DerpyCon for doing this nice little Josh memorial. Josh unfortunately suddenly passed away prior to the convention. He was a staff member at Derpy and Zenkai and an all-around good guy, and he will be missed. For the bad... There was really nothing bad. Good job, DerpyCon. For the ugly, what should have been better? We need to schedule a week earlier. I think it affected my ability to plan out what I wanted to see in the convention. I'm sure it did for other attendees, too. The hotel had some maintenance issues that were pretty glaring this year. One being the revolving door at the main entrance not working. Now, there were two side doors you could go through next to it, but really that should have been fixed. One elevator was down the entire weekend, and while it did not cause any severe traffic jam-ups, it could be a major issue in the future, and it should be fixed. I thought the selection of the dealer's room was weak this year. I'm kind of hoping it improves now that the convention is growing and looking stronger. A friend of mine came up and said, I didn't spend anything in there. I personally bought a t-shirt and some random merch, but really, that was about it. I thought the schedule in terms of depth, especially related to panels, is a little bit weak this year. There was definitely some gaps in the schedule, depending on what you're looking to see. Um... I had one person come up to me and say, you know, if I wasn't doing XYZ here, I wouldn't have much to do. I had another person come up to me and say, there was a lot of stuff canceled on Friday. So I'm hoping with more attendance at this convention that we're going to see a deeper selection of panels submitted to them that will lead to a better schedule in general. Overall, DerpyCon had a banner year this year. This might have been the best DerpyCon ever held. They had impressive growth. They had attendance of over 2,800, which is amazing. That is huge growth for them. I'm giving the convention a B. Even with it being a banner year, with impressive growth, there are some things they will need to improve on. Could this be the golden age of DerpyCon we're entering? We'll have to wait and see and find out. Thanks for watching.